Good morning, Knicks Nation. Today is Thursday, the 28th day of December 2023. I hope you're safe and healthy today and that your family's safe and healthy and that the needs of you and your family in terms of food, shelter, clothing, as well as health are being met today. Blessings upon those that work in the health care field along with the first responders every day saving lives, along with those that pick up garbage to keep our streets and sidewalks and cities clean and disease free. And those also that make deliveries of point of things for our, for our convenience. Double blessings on the many women that are out here trying to help rescue, deliver, and recover. The teenagers and children that are the victims of child molestation and pedophilia. The victims also of pornography and child pornography, prostitution and child prostitution, human trafficking, and sex slavery. Double curses, double curses on the perpetrators, the profiteers, and the perverts that create this industry. Finally, double blessings on the homeless. Nearly 600,000 men, women, and children homeless in the United States of America and millions around the world in either similar or even worse conditions. Blessings upon them, for theirs is the kingdom. There was a basketball game last night in Oklahoma City, and the Oklahoma City Thunder defeated New York Knicks 129-120. Now, we was expecting this to be a difficult game. Um, I, I explained that Oklahoma City, you know, because they have a rebuilt organization, when they get ready to rebuild uh, the team in terms of players, uh, it's not an easy job, but it gets done much quicker because they know what they're doing. They've been doing it a, for a while. And they've done it a couple of times. Um, <clears throat> so... Here they're at it again. And so, the, you know, they they were third in the West as of the start of the game. I don't know if they're still third in the West or even higher now, but it was not going to be an easy game for the Knicks, and it wasn't. And the interesting thing was the strategy that was used. They actually, that is Oklahoma City, actually used a Knicks strategy on the Knicks. <laughs> so what they did, so and, and, and what they are doing it's just really brilliant to see an organization and team do things the way they do it. And I guess you could not, it's hard. You see here, look, the Knicks are rebuilding their whole organization and their team in a five-year period. And it's harder, it's hard for them to do it because there's screams from the media and the fans to do stupid things that would bring you back where you were before, things that cause you to be a losing organization and to be a, a, a laughing stock. And so trying to get out of that takes patience. There's none in New York. But Oklahoma City is a sleepy little city. Okay. Now they got a lot of things going on in, on the street level too, but it's not as populated as New York. It's not as big a media capital as New York, obviously. So they don't get the pressure that comes with being on, in New York, the the, the uh, Sam Presti is not getting what Leon Rose is getting in terms of demands from the media that you tell us what you're getting ready to do so we can blab about it all over the earth. And then uh, uh, Tom Thibodeau's every move is overanalyzed. The Oklahoma City coach looked like, you know, he just get up from a picnic or something when he get ready to come coach. So it, it's a whole different thing. So that cocoon allows them. To build what they're doing. It's amazing to see. So last night, they're playing Chuck Holmgren about 30 minutes a game. So they done figured out to keep him in that 30-minute range. Okay? I thought it would be 25, but they decided it was 30. And, and it's working. Okay? And it's amazing how they're doing it. They start him. They sit him for a while. Then all of a sudden, they bring him back at crunch time. And, he, and it's working. It's working. So last night... They decided, they, the Oklahoma City Thunder, to gang up on Brunson and leave RJ wide open. And it happened to be a night where RJ brought his Ray Charles glasses. It was that. And they played that beautifully. RJ was one for seven from three. They were, and it wasn't he was being contested. He got maybe one or two. Contested shots. Most of his shots, they left him open. They were ganging up on Randall, ganging up on Brunson, and leaving RJ open. Okay? So so I, I was yelling at the TV too, but I understood what was going on. See, you get emotional when you watch the game. That's why I don't do 
you know, post game stuff. Cause I don't want to, I, I don't like to make emotional outbursty analysis that is just on, if, if, you know, that's, that's hype. And I hear that, that sells. I don't like it because it's not clear. It's not concise. And most of the time it's not true. So with RJ, I understood what was going on. The most frustrating thing to me though, and this is a, a mistake Tibbs made. And listen, he's allowed to make mistakes, y'all. It does happen. But he made one last night, in my view. Who am I? But I, I, you know, quickly, he started off a little slow, a little bit, but then quickly was becoming a problem for Oklahoma City. And this is the thing. Again, the bench, you know, very important. Oklahoma City's bench, you know, very important. The benches are very important. So here comes quick. And he ended up with 22. Him and Grimes were the only zero plus players on the on the bench and on the whole team, actually. Um, Hardesty was plus four. Everybody else was negative. But quickly was part of a crew. It was quickly, I think it was, was the whole bench crew. So it was Gibson, Hart, quickly, Grimes. And then they had Brunson out there with them sometimes. And they were making a run. They were making a move. Okay. And, and you know, the Knicks, uh, they were down most of the game. I mean, most of the game, they were compl- they were out of it. You know, but not out of it, but they were behind, playing from behind. Sometimes as much as 15, 18 points behind. But um, they kept coming back. And this crew was really leading a charge. They had got it to tie. They, they tied the game at, at one point. And I was like, Okay, okay, here we are. We're all the way back. Then Tibbs substitutes out IQ and puts in RJ. And again, I'm going to say it. I, I, I understood why he did it. I, you want to hear why he did it? And this is what a lot of people won't get with Tibbs because y'all be so critical. Once Tibbs decides... A guy is his guy. He going to ride that guy. The guy could go 0 for 40. Tibbs would still set him up for the last shot of the game. I know. It's frustrating. But that's him. So there was a point in the fourth when they were making this run. I said, okay, because there's also times what Tibbs does. Is he'll ride the t- the crew that's hot. So I was like, okay, so you got Hart out there. Hart started balling, that diving on the floor, getting them loose ball, and then you had uh, Q out there. Q dog was playing defense and actually hitting some shots. And then you you know it was and then Hartenstein came in and Taj and Hartenstein they're doing a pretty good job. And of course Juju was not playing his best game. But this was a typical game, a 25 and 9 game for Juju. <laughs> That's him. But it wasn't his best game. Like, he was making some really dumb turnovers. Um, but see, the thing about Julius is that he's not, you know, he's not always he's not always the highest IQ player. And they were attacking him. They were triple teaming him. He was, wasn't getting rid of the ball fast enough. And it was a combination. I don't want to blame him completely because on a couple of them, he was looking for somebody, but nobody was cutting. So, this was, yeah. This was a loss that you were thinking, you know, and, and it's, it's bad when you get a team that you say is clearly better than the Knicks. And if the Knicks could win this game, they'd be lucky, right? Like a Bucks team or whatever. But when you get a team into the fourth quarter and you're right there and you can win this game and a couple of tactical things stop you, it's frustrating to watch. I know you're feeling that, you know, because I know I feel it. So he puts, he takes RJ out and they make a run. Then all of a sudden when they're about to, in my view, Make close this deal. He put your RJ back in, and of course Oklahoma was happy to see that. Cause what did they do? They let RJ shoot. They cut off everything. They cut off the drive for RJ because RJ's bully ball. Now they cut that off. I mean, they did a great job cutting that off. They cut off the drive. They doubled up on Brunson. 
and they let RJ shoot. They let you don't you see you have to understand when you see RJ floating into a spot and he's wide open, the defense is allowing that. They're saying, Oh, go ahead, beat us then if you can. That's what they're saying. The Knicks do were doing it all, they do it to people all the time. Okay? But it was got done to them last night. So <clears throat> that was the ball game. That was the ball game. Uh, and the Knicks were playing. They really were playing. I mean, too many turnovers. 18 turnovers. You know, that was way too many. Way, way, way too many. And that was, again, you got to give credit to Oklahoma City. It wasn't just bad ball handling. Oklahoma City had a strategy. They ganged up on Brunson. They ganged up on, on, on Randall. They let RJ shoot. They were trying to let DiVincenzo shoot, <laughs> but Debo wasn't having it, but they let RJ shoot. So, yeah, that, that was the ball game, basically. I mean, when you, when you cannot turn the ball over 18 times, they had four, four turnovers, the whole game. They had four. Yeah, Shea Gilders Alexander is a superstar. So, I, so, you know, when you see a superstar and he scores 36, and blah, 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 don't be surprised. This ain't high school. These dudes are the best in the world. So they're going to get what they get. If he's been averaging 28, whatever, 30, he's going to get that. The only thing you could do is stop it from being easy. And they were trying. The guy is really an amazing player. So it wasn't that. But that wasn't what killed us. What killed us, first of all, uh, I get these two brothers confused. There's J Dub and there's J Will. J Dub and J Will, and I have to look it up all the time because yeah, because uh, I think it was now the one that came out of Santa Clara is J Will. The one that's in Arkansas that kind of got the Asian look is J Dub. Okay, J Will. You know, the, the dude that really surprised everybody. Um, I mean, he was, a lot of people were picking him to go higher in the draft than he did that year. But he's a player, man. This cat can play. But he was, he hit five for five from three. Okay. That was big for them. That was big uh, for them. And then, the, again, the way they used Holmgren is brilliant. It's brilliant. See, if if we use Kristoff like that, he might still be on the Knicks. But see how they did it? And they, they, they played him in the first, took him out, played him a little bit between the second and third, not a lot, then saved him for the end of the fourth. And he was doing work, man. He was doing 9 to 14, five boards, four blocks. If they keep this up, they're going to be tough this year. They're doing it smart, smart, smart. And Kendrick Williams was smart, was good. I mean, their bench was just good. Isaiah Joe is tough. Um, uh, uh, Bert, uh, Bertin, J will, uh, J Dub is is good. They they got a nice bench, man. And um, but and Giddy, oh yeah, you know. But Dort was Dort defensively. Shea Gilders, Alexander, Jalen Williams, Chet Hungry. They they had a strategy, okay. But with all that, the Knicks could have still won the game. So I mean, that doesn't mean anything for last night's game, but it means stuff for the future. We got to play these guys again, and when we do. We have to be prepared. Um, first of all, until RJ shows he can beat you, they're going to let him shoot. Okay? Now, there's been games this year where we've seen RJ shoot the ball very well from three. Okay? He's been, he, did that, he did that earlier this year. He did that in games. In fact, I think the last game he had a solid shooting game. So it's up and down with him. And you know what, though? That, isn't that the story of RJ for the total time he's been in New York? It's been kind of up and down. Um, so, you know, you're going to get upside as well as you get down with him. You know, that's another story. But for now, he has got to get back on taking off the Ray Charles glass and go back. Now, even from the foul line, he was usually better than he was three of six. They did a great job. They, they shut him off. RJ likes to set up everything with going to the basket. He, again, he's bully ball. He's strong. He likes to come from the wing and bully his way into the basket. And he'll, he's very good at it. And he does it off the break as well. But they shut that off. And they made him shoot jump shots. And he was missing. And that was game. Okay, that was really it. That with the turnovers. So you can't turn the ball over 18 times against a team like that. And, and then they, they only turn it over four times. And you expect to win the basketball game. It's, it's not going to happen. 
Okay, it's just not going to happen. I mean, the Knicks and the Knicks out rebounded them. They out rebounded them pretty large. I mean, like I said, uh, Randall, Hartenstein, Hart. They were all doing business, man. They were doing business on the boards. Even Grimey was out there doing some business on the board. But you got to control that basketball better. You got to set the tempo better. Okay, this is the iteration we're at right now with the Knicks. Got to set the tempo, control the basketball. Um, like I said. You know, I still get people talking about, we need to pick up a center. No, we don't need to pick up a center. We just need to wait for Sims, two weeks or whatever. Right now, they're doing okay. They're not doing Mitch Rob level, but they're doing the Hartenstein, Taj, and Juju level. So we just got to roll with that while we while we need to. That's no problem. But the turnovers, you cannot have 18 turnovers. There's just no way. And look, Julius is known to be getting five and six turnovers. He had three last night. Brunson had five. RJ had five. RJ was bad last night. He was. We can't have that. Okay, we can't have that. So we're going to have to see what's going on. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. I know it's going to frustrate you, but there'll be no changes. Okay? I know y'all hate to hear this, especially in New York, with all the media and all the attention and all the... Tibbs ain't going to make no changes. Not to the lineup. Forget it. Okay? So RJ is going to still be there. In fact, if they were to make a trade in the summer, the likelihood is they trade somebody that's a, and get a three and move RJ to the two and, you know, go from there. That's how they probably do it. But no changes. So all we can hope for, they got to get ready for tomorrow against o o Orlando, period. Okay. So RJ has to get back on his game. I don't know what he got to do. Go out in the gym, shoot 500, you know, like Tibbs would tell him, get in that gym and shoot, bro. Shoot 500 shots a today, today, and get in that gym and get back on your game. Let's get that rhythm back and and, and, and get your head in the game, you know. Um, other than that, you know, next game, you just got to go in the next game, okay? Then look here, look here. The Knicks are 17 and 13. 30 games into the season, they're 17 and 13, Okay? Hey, listen, you, you can't complain about that. 17 and 13. A after the schedule that they had, okay, after the schedule that they had, to say 17 and 13, that, that's a what that's like a 56% winning percentage. It's not the it's not yet where I think they're gonna end up, but that's pretty daggone good. Here we are, okay? 30 games in. So if there is a change to be made. About the time Tiz would do it is now, but I don't think he's going to make any because of the injury to Mitchell Robinson, which precipitated Taj Gibson and, and changes to the lineup in terms of minutes for Hartenstein. So I don't think he's going to make any other changes, but it is what it is. I, I would have liked to see Grimes get more than 11 minutes last night, but again, it is what it is. That ain't what lost the game. The turnovers lost the game and wide open missed shots lost the game. Really, that's what it was. That's what it was at the end of the day. So, on to the next one. Uh, we got Orlando coming up tomorrow night. We'll talk about that. Uh, I don't even know. Uh, last night in the NBA, I know Orlando played two nights ago. Uh, let's see. Last night. Let's see. Of our enemies. Who played last night? Yes, Orlando played last night. Lost to Philly. I told y'all, Philly, you know, I told y'all. Somebody else told, you know, what is that? somebody said, oh, Reed is terrible. I'm like, anyway, they beat Orlando last night in Orlando, 112 to 92. Um, and they played well. That Reed, 15 points, 10 boards. Uh, Tobias Harris, 22. Maxie was back on his game. He had a bad game the other night, <clears throat> but uh, the game before this, and came back with 23 last night. 22 with De'Anthony De Anthony Melton. Um, Mook came off the bench with 14. Pat Beverly had 10. They, you know, they they handled business. So that actually, I wanted um, I wanted Philly to win because that helps the Knicks in the standings, and it did help the Knicks in the standings. The Knicks are now. A half game. They're in the seventh seed, half game behind Cleveland, a uh, game behind Orlando, and we play Orlando's head up tomorrow. So here we go. Just get ready for this one. Y'all enjoy your Thursday. Shalom.